I am going to explain about another resulting reaction called as rocket immunoelectrophoresis, which is also called as Laurel's technique. L A U R E L apostrophe S. Laurel's technique. This technique demonstrates the Prespin reaction using an electrophoretic apparatus where the antibody is already incorporated in the gel, agarose gel, and antigen is made to move in the presence of electric field in the agarose gel which is already mixed with antibody. As a result, as the antigen starts moving in the direction of the electric field, that is antigen is connected to the negative pole and it is made to move towards the positive pole. As it starts moving towards the positive pole, it readily interacts with antibody which is incorporated in the agarose gel and starts producing precipitate. And due to the electric field, the antigen with force will be moving towards the positive pole. It creates the precipitin band to appear like rocket tail or comet tail, which appears like a rocket. Therefore, it is called as rocket immunoelectrophoresis. As shown in the figure here, the rocket is appearing like a comet tail with a pointed end. The pointed end is towards the positive pole. The antigen is moving towards the positive pole and the pointed end is towards the positive pole. And such a precipitin band, one can measure the height of this precipitin band and compare it with the concentration of the antigen and then calculate the concentration of unknown antigen based on the height of the rocket. And this technique takes hardly about one hour compared to another technique that I had explained that is single radial immunodiffusion. In the single radial immunodiffusion also the antibody is incorporated in the gel and the antigen is made to diffuse inside the gel to form a precipitin ring but it takes overnight to see the precipitin ring whereas in the case of rocket immunoelectrophoresis the result will be available within an hour and the size of the rocket that the height of the rocket indicates the concentration of the antigen because you have incorporated the antibody in the agarose gel and a known concentration of antigens are taken in some wells which will give the height of the rocket and unknown that is unknown sample is loaded in some wells and the height of those rockets when compared with the known concentration one can find out the concentration of unknown antigen. And these are the requirements which I have already mentioned earlier that instead of a small microscope slide you will need a large glass plate to pour the agarose and each glass plate is poured with 15 ml of agarose and before pouring the agarose onto the slide, slide has to be very clean with alcohol and the agarose is melted in appropriate quantity of the buffer by heating it gently at a moderate heat and when it is completely dissolved it is uh, now cooled for about 40 degrees so that you can feel the temperature and hold the agar container in your hand and to that you add the antibody to the molten agarose known concentration of antibody known volume is added and after adding that antibody to the agarose you gently mix that agarose without creating air bubbles gently mix it and then pour that agarose onto the 
the glass plate and each glass plate requires about 15 ml of the molten agarose right and once the agarose is poured on the glass plate that glass plate allow it to solidify for some time in the laboratory temperature after that you transfer the slide to the moist chamber and keep it in the moist chamber for half an hour in the fridge and after the slide has been cooled sufficiently the agarose has solidified properly and it is now ready to be used for punching now keep the slide on the stencil and then punch the wells as shown in the diagram the wells for the antigen to be loaded are punched on one side of the slide and after punching the wells <coughs> the slide is ready to be loaded with the sample <coughs> now 10 microliters of the known concentration of antigen to be loaded in each well and dedicate one or two wells for the unknown sample to be loaded. First into the wells known concentration of antigen is going to be loaded. And then in the last two wells or three wells, unknown concentration of antigen is going to be loaded. After loading the samples, the slide is to be kept in the electrophoresis apparatus platform. Please note the antigens loaded, antigen loaded side is to be connected to the negative pole and the opposite side should be connected to the positive pole. As shown in the diagram here, the antigen loaded side is kept oriented towards the negative pole and antibody side to the positive pole. Now after you keep the slide, you may connect the slide with the gauze by dipping that gauze in the buffer. Gently place the gauze on the sides of the slide such that it doesn't come in contact with the sample. After placing the gauze, switch on the current in such a way that about 50 volts. Since the antigen samples that are loaded readily contain the tracking dye, which is nothing but the bromophenol blue, allow the electrophoresis to take place in such a way that the tracking dye, which is there in the antigen well, comes almost towards the side of the positive pole. Until the dye reaches the positive pole, you can track the dye and continue with the electrophoresis and then stop. It is an indication that the sample has sufficiently moved under the presence of electric field. Just in case, if you have the provision, you may avoid using the gauze piece instead what you can do is you can flood the electrophoretic 
chambers with buffer in such a way that it just covers and comes to the edge of the slide such that only the buffer is touching the agar rows but not overflowing over it. Please see to it that the buffer does not overflow over the slide. As long as it touches the agar rows, it will be sufficient to conduct the electricity. To avoid using the gauss piece, one can adopt this technique where the two chambers of the electrophoresis apparatus can be filled with buffer such that that buffer just touches the agar rows but does not overflow over it. Then one can avoid using the gauze piece. Then when you connect the electrophoretic apparatus to the power supply, the current will flow through agar rows because there is a continuity maintained with the buffer which is touching the agar rows. So once the electrophoresis is completed, as the tracking die has moved to the opposite side, to the positive pole, stop the electrophoresis by switching off the current, take out the slide and hold it against the black background obliquely and see whether the pristine bands can be seen like this, like rockets. If you keep the slide overnight in the moist chamber and keep it in the fridge, the rockets will become much more visible and strongly visible next day. On the first day when you have carried out the electrophoresis, of course the rocket will be seen but the pristine band may be weakly seen. It will be very strong and much brighter after keeping it overnight in the moist chamber. Now measure the height of each rocket of the standard antigen sample that you have loaded, that is known concentration of antigen that you have loaded. Here the known concentration of antigen lowest to the highest in the left hand direction, lowest to the highest. You can see that the lowest concentration of antigen has a small rocket and the highest concentration of antigen has a longer rocket. Then dedicate extreme right hand side wells to the unknown sample whose concentration of the antigen has to be found out. Measure the height of the rocket from the base of the well. From the base of the well to the tip of the rocket measure the height in centimeters either by placing the glass slide on a graph paper and each division of the graph paper is equal to 1 millimeter or by placing a steel scale where the graduation of the scale can be seen through the transparent agar rows and measure the height of the rocket. Tabulate the reading and plot a graph like that. On the y axis, take the height of the rocket in centimeters and on the x axis, use take the concentration of antigens in the increasing order. The height of the rocket is plotted against the concentration of the antigen. One would get a linear graph because the concentration of antigens was increased in a linear fashion and then the height of the unknown sample measure it and compare it with the standard you will come to know the concentration of the unknown antigen by plotting it against the standard. This way you can find out the concentration of unknown antigen. And the results will be available within one hour and the experiment is very fast and very sensitive and can be used for soluble antigen and soluble antibody pristine reaction under the presence of electric field for the quick demonstration of antigen antibody reaction. So by this 
you can find out the concentration of the antigen of the unknown sample. Thank you very much.